sometimes my wife will look over at me in the chair and got this gauge look on my face and she goes, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? And so often that I'm just dwelling on what God has been showing me or having me question in my heart. <coughs> and so many times I just get in this staring contest with the wall because I'm listening and trying to hear what God is speaking to me. Now, you know for sure, I don't have it all figured out. Amen. Right? But I know that God isn't through with me yet. God has not said, you're done, you're complete. Probably more than you, he takes me off that potter's wheel, throws it on the floor, and says, let's start over. Because we're all in the hands of the master potter, aren't we? So this morning, I, I want to share with you for a short period of time. I don't know, maybe however long God has me up here. Psalms 139, we'll start with verse 7. Lord, bless your reading of your word today. Bless the reading of your word today. I pray, God, that it pierces our hearts with the Holy Spirit of revelation. We pray, Lord, that every time we open up your word, that we pray, Spirit of God, reveal to us, because you are the one that put it on minds of the men that wrote it. You gave instruction. The word is written by the pen of the Holy Spirit in men's hands. So we thank you for that this morning, Lord Jesus. Amen. Verse 7, where can I go from thy spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and shield, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me. And your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. And the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. For you did form my inward parts. You did weave me in my mother's womb. Basically, you cannot hide from God. Wherever you want or wherever you think you can go to hide from God, you cannot do it. First of all, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere, isn't he? Everywhere. You cannot hide from God. You cannot get away from God. He is everywhere. There's been people that tried. Look at Genesis chapter 3. Now, we can't get confused with the omnipresence of God to the manifestation of the presence of God. And what do I mean by the manifestation? It means this. God is everywhere, correct? But sometimes he wants to show up and be intimate with you. Sometimes he manifests himself in a, in a way where you can see God, where you can hear God, where you can feel his presence. That's the manifestation of God. So many times we think we're going to hide from God by running away or, or hiding or climbing a tree or whatever it is. Or maybe like Quinn said this morning, maybe I'm going to turn the radio on so I can drown out God. So you can try to escape from the manifestation of God, but you can't get away from God's omnipresence. Look at chap Genesis chapter 3. Go to verse 8. Well, let me go to verse 6. When the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves <laughs> loin coverings. And they heard, they heard, they heard the manifestation of God, of the sound of God, begin to flow into the garden. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking. 
the manifestation of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. God shows up and they try to hide from the manifestation presence of God. Even though God's seen where they were, even though God's omnipresent and he's everywhere, they tried to hide from the presence of God. Have you tried to hide from the presence of God? Have you put God on the back burner so you can enjoy life without the presence of God? You're not going to outrun God. You're not going to hide from God. You will hide and you can hide from his manifestation presence that he wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to wrap his arms around you. How many of you know that you can actually feel God squeezing you? Some of you in this room might think, well, I've never felt that. Then you've never stepped into the manifestation of God's presence. We need to have the ability to step in to the manifestation of God's presence. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. I heard the manifestation of your presence in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. You cannot hide yourself. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Then the man said, The woman thou givest to me with me, she gave me from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman, the serpent, deceived, and I ate. She tried to blame it on something else, when in fact, in reality, they stepped away from the manifestation of God's presence by doing what they were told not to do. Has God ever said to you, Do this? Well, Lord, I don't want to. Or I can't right now. I need to do so many other things right now. The manifestation of God's presence takes a, takes a step back. Why? It's because he doesn't want to invade your circle. Because we have to welcome him into our circle. God will never pressure you to do anything that you don't want. Now, if he's called you to do something, and you don't walk in that calling, you will have a pretty rough life. And what do I mean by that? Every corner you take, God will say, hey, 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 hey this is what I've asked, this is what I've asked you, but you can hide all you want. To no avail. There's people out there today that refuse to believe the truth because they're hiding from the truth. They're hiding from the manifestation presence of God Almighty because God Almighty is in the truth. Jesus says, I am truth. And the truth will set me free. Don't hide from the truth. Don't hide from the presence of God. Don't hide from him wanting to sit with you and talk with you and, and share things with you. If you have a question, write it down. And see if God doesn't answer it for you sometime down the road, in service, in Bible study, somewhere. See if God doesn't answer it for you. And then I challenge you to write down the answer you receive. Because as you write down the answer you receive, you begin to ponder the question and the answer. Can you imagine if, if Adam and Eve would have thought, you know what, let's think about this a little bit. He knows we're naked. He, he knows we did wrong. So why are we trying to hide from his presence? Again, don't get the omnipresence presence confused with the manifestation presence of God. He wants to reveal himself to you in a supernatural way. Well, Pastor, what do you mean by a supernatural way? He wants to talk to you. He wants to take up a boat with you. He wants to come in and sup with you and you with him. He wants to be a part of your life. Don't shun him. Because you can't hide from him. You can go in the deepest, darkest place and his light's still there. You cannot hide from God. Just quit trying. Nothing is more important to God than his relationship to you. Shouldn't it be the same with us? Shouldn't the first thing in our hearts should be our relationship with God, no matter what's happening around us? No, no matter what the enemy throws in front of us. Do you really need to do that today? You always got tomorrow. Hey, 
I'm the biggest procrastinator that ever lived. You can ask my wife. Mow the lawn, I'll do it tomorrow. I want this weed eater edge, I'll do that tomorrow. But what's amazing about me is when I start it, it gets done, no problem. My problem is getting started. Right? But God says, I will get you started on the direction where you can draw closer to me if you open yourself up to me and let me come in. Let me manifest myself to you. Some of you might be thinking, well, God, you know, he breathed life into the world. He put the sun and the moon and the stars. And what, what makes you think that he's going to come in and talk to me because he said he would? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Open that thing up and let him come in and let him eat with you, let him talk with you, let him share with you. Have you ever been in a place where you absolutely want to sit on your chair or stand in front of the mirror and give him God a piece of your mind? <laughs> what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Then he comes back with a response. I'm thinking about you. But God, there's so many other people in this world, but I'm thinking about you. That's all part of being omni, omnipresent. That's all part of being God. You know, he can think about you and 50 million other people at the same time. He can hear your prayer right along with 50 million other people at the same time and put every bit, every every listening ear he has on that just like he can anybody else. That's a God we serve. Chapter 4 of Genesis, verse 16. Verse 14. Behold, thou hast driven me this day from the face of the ground, and from thy face I shall be hidden. And I shall be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth, and it will come about that whoever finds me will kill me. So the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord appointed a sign for Cain, lest anyone finding him should slay him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain left the presence of the Lord because of what he had done. Now, I, I'm not saying this for factually, but I wonder what would happen if Cain got this deeds and said, God forgive me. Forgive me. I, I, I did something very stupid. Forgive me. I wonder what would have happened. But you see how God has everything planned out? Because if that would have happened, Seth would have came along. And Seth the one, the Bible says, that they begin to worship the Lord. So you cannot hide from God. Cain was hiding from God when he was offering his sacrifice. Now we can all take steps and figure out what was wrong with his and what was so powerful about Abel's. We can go there, but there's no need to. The problem is God seen Cain's sacrifice from Cain's heart and it wasn't right. God seen Cain's sacrifice from Cain's heart and it wasn't right. I challenge you today to examine your heart as you are walking in the presence of God because he knows what you're thinking. He knows what your heart's saying. He knows if you promise this, you better do it. Lord, I made a mistake when I promised that. Hey, you know what? I'll help you fulfill it. But you cannot hide from the presence of God. They heard his manifested voice, so they hid they didn't want to be in the presence of God because they were afraid that God was going to rebuke them. Did God rebuke them? Who told you you were naked? I told you not to eat from the tree, but guess what he did after that? He provided for them, didn't he? Look at the Bible. He provided for them. Put clothes on them. The very first animal sacrifice, the very first blood sacrifice, the animal blood sacrifice was for Cain, or was for uh, Adam and Eve. The very first one, which points to the blood sacrifice that happened on the cross thousands of years later. Clothed them, fed them, bound them up. 
You can try to escape, but you never will. Look, turn with me to Jonah. We're going to go to chapter 1 of Jonah. We all know Jonah's story. Or we think we do. Jonah was a disobedient dude. Jonah was complaining to God because God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach the gospel. Of course, back then it wasn't called the gospel, it was called preach the kingdom. Look at Jonah's response, verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Jonah tried to flee the manifested presence of the Lord, but couldn't get away. So he went down to Joppa, found a ship which was going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went down into it to go with him to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So we have Adam and Eve trying to hide from the presence. We have Cain trying to hide from the presence. And if you look in the Bible, you'll see lots of people trying to hide from the presence. David said, do not take your spirit from me. Psalms, another part of the Psalms even tells us that, that we cannot hide from God because He's everywhere. Do not take your presence from me. Examine my heart. How many of us in this room today are prepared to say, God, examine my heart? Except that part. Don't examine that part because you might throw a lightning bolt my way. <laughs> but you know the response is as we say don't examine our total heart he said I've already examined your heart my son went to the cross for it so as he examines your heart and you open more and more up to it more and more to the presence of the Lord stepping in and taking over the void in your heart then you will always walk in that presence. I used to talk to Cliff on the phone all the time when he was working. And he would always call me and talk to me about different things. And, and he's saying, well, I, you know, I can drive to work. I can go from job to job. I can be on the job site, do my job, and still be in his presence. And still talk to him. And still pray with him. And still be in his, in his service. And, and still come under the Spirit. And still do my job. How is that possible? Because God is on the scene. You can be in God's presence and still maintain whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. But the secret is this, folks. Desire to be in God's presence. Desire to be in God's presence. Don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together unless you want to be in the presence of God. I'm not saying that you don't can't be in His presence outside of this walls, but what I'm saying is this, when you come together, there's a bunch of people walking in his presence. Amen? Things happen when you're walking in the manifestation presence of God. Things happen. The Holy Spirit comes and gives you gifts. Gives you the strength, gives you the ability through him, not through you, but through him to do what he's called you to do. I remember when you read the Bible too, when Peter walked into the temple to get ready to go to the temple and do his thing. Beggar outside the temple. You can't do this without the presence of God. You can't walk up to the beggar and say, hey, I don't have any money and I don't have any gold, but what I do have, I'm going to give you. Get up and walk. You can't do that without the presence of the living God dwelling in you. You can't do that without walking in the manifestation of a Holy Spirit, God that dwells in you. You cannot do that unless God is walking with you through garden, through garden, through garden, through garden, through Nineveh, through Nineveh, through Nineveh. Any place that God's called you to, He will be there with you. And what's amazing to me is He shows up before you even get there a lot of times. I've had people tell me over and over again, there's something, when I walk in them doors, there's something takes place. 
Something happens when I walk in them doors. Something, something transforms me when I walk in them doors. Why? It's because the Holy Spirit's come in with people. Well, I've heard this. Well, I can't wait to get there because I'll meet the Spirit. But guess what? If you don't bring him, he ain't coming. <laughs> And what I mean by that is this. If you're not dwelling in His manifestation presence by the Holy Spirit, no matter where you go, he's, he's right there with you. You can't walk into the door and say, okay, bring it on. No, He's already there with you. When you walk in, you feel His presence, it's because everybody else is dwelling in His presence. And then something kind of gives you a giddy up. And what that is, is you're, you know what? I'm walking in the Spirit. Isn't that what Paul told us to do? Walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Your flesh would tell you it's not possible to walk in the Spirit. Your flesh would tell you every day, well, how can I, how can I sit in God's presence when, he's, when he, he's done so much? Because that's what He wants to do. That's what He wants to do. He wants to love on you. He wants to hug you. He wants to wrap his arms around you. He wants to feel you drawing into him. I was praying for a man the other day on the phone who had an important meeting. I said, let me tell you what. I'm going to pray that God's presence is with you as you go and he shows up before you get there. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I said, I'll tell you what I mean. As you walk with the Holy Spirit, as He's in you and you're walking in His presence, as you show up to the meeting, He will be there to institute and to go on whatever it is because you brought Him. Don't be confused by what I said, but I'm going to pray that He's there when you get there. You're going to bring Him in, and as you dwell, dwell in your mind, when I go, He's going to be there. It automatically tells you, you know what? When I get there, He's going to be there. Why? Because you're This gentleman had an important meeting he had to go to, so I'm going to pray that you walk in the Spirit when you get in there. And he says, uh, what does that mean? And I began to explain to him the presence of the Spirit. I began to explain to him about how the Holy Spirit moves in and takes up residence in you, and he walks with you everywhere you go. This happened to be the same individual I talked to at the uh, sportsman's warehouse that day. He called me with some with some questions. I gave him the, the answers to his questions. My prayer is that he accepts them and walks in them because not everybody does. People call up all the time wanting to know this, this, this. Okay, I'm going to res I'm going to explain to you what I'm going to tell you. It's up to you to walk in it. Amen? Sometimes all we want to do is send all kinds of things to all kinds of people and do this and do this and do that. The problem is they reject God because they don't understand God. Because they've been lost in religion. Amen? What we have to do is let people go and let God deal with them. Amen? That's hard to do, isn't it? Well, I want this person to be there. He will be there if you pray and seek God and walk in His manifestation presence because He will do what He said He would do. Now, in the last days, there's going to be such a thing called apostasy. I really believe in my heart, I could be dead wrong, but I really believe in my heart that if you're a faith walker and you're walking in the righteousness of God and you're walking in the presence, the manifestation presence of God, you can't be apostate. You can't turn your back on God. If you're walking in that freedom, if you're already walking there, it's all the heart to say, God, I don't know who you are, and leave. It's, it's hard. So you have to examine your walk. Did I really know Jesus? Did I really give myself over to Jesus? Did I really ask him to take over my life? Because there's so much that I want to hold on to. Well, we need to realize that God said he would do it. He's going to do it. If God promised you that he's going to bring someone to salvation, it will happen. If God promised you that every time you sin something or talk to somebody or whatever it is, it will happen. It can only be a promise he's given you, but it will happen. If you're asking God to relieve something from you, and you're walking in his manifestation presence, it will happen. Not on your time, his time. Your time is simply let go. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. I can see Isaiah going. Okay. Send me. 
send me on. And that's what God does. Who am I going to send? Who am I going to who am I going to relate this desire of mine to? Who am I going to do it to? The person who's willing to go. The world will cause us to believe that we don't have what it takes to be an overcomer. The world will make you think that you are lesser than you were yesterday simply because of who you are in Christ. They have taken the Christian Judeo ethics and values and put them behind the outhouse. But we have a responsibility to walk in his presence and to keep bringing that stuff up because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Amen? Don't let the enemy ever tell you it's not going to happen. Don't let the enemy tell you you're wasting your time. Don't let the enemy ever tell you that's never going to happen for you. It's not going to, it's not going to happen in your lifetime. Because he's a liar. And Jesus says he's the father of lies. He's the first liar in the neighborhood. The first deceiver that ever lived. And he's still trying to deceive mankind. Look at your numbers. Those believers that once called upon the name of Jesus have stepped out of his presence because of they're more important with the world than they are with walking in his righteousness. They want to achieve greatness to get pats on their back instead of achieving this. Well done. Well done. I cannot express to you how important it is in the times that we live in that you barrel down. That you barrel down. And you walk in an attitude of prayer. And you walk in a manifestation of his presence. Because you can't hide from God. Remember what the Bible says about rocks. If you choose not to praise my name. The rocks will fall. I don't want to be no rock. I want to be a praise boy. I want to invite in Jesus so I can walk in and the only way that happens is to be open to his presence in your life. Amen. Turn to uh, Exodus chapter 33. <clears throat> Can you imagine being Moses? He promised in verse 14, God says, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Look up to verse 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, thou did say to me, Bring up this people. But you yourself have not let me know. Who will send? Who you will send with me? Moreover, you have said, "I have known you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight." Can you imagine hearing that from God? You have found favor in my sight. The manifestation, manifestation presence of God told Moses, "You have found favor in my sight." Now, therefore, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know that ways that I may know thee. So that I may find favor in thy sight, consider, too, that this nation is thy people. And then God said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Verse 15, Moses said this, if thy presence does not go with us, do not lead us from this spot. God, if you're not going to go with us, don't leave us here. We're not going to move from here. Remember the Exodus story? The pillar of fire and the, the, the clouds? Remember that? God promised to be with them. Every time they moved, God went before them. Every time they undid the tents and started moving down the road, God went before them. When they went to the temple to pray, the, the cloud, the glory cloud, the Shekinah glory came down 
And God was with them. He's the same with you today. God is with you today. The same as he was with Jonah. The same as he was with, with Moses. The same as he was with Joshua. The same as he was with Caleb. The same as he was with Jacob. God is with you. Pastor, that's Old Testament stuff. It doesn't matter. The word's the word. Jesus says, I'm going to send you the comforter. I'm going to send you someone who will bring you up. Someone that will re reveal to you the deeper things of the word. Who is that? That's the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, if I don't go, he can't come. He comes now and he resides with you. His presence is in you. God's manifested presence dwells in you, people of God. when they took Pledge of Allegiance out and Ten Commandments out of the schools and in order to free speech and all that stuff, it began its decline. In the 70s, when they made abortion legal, it began to continue its decline. Now, if a woman has an aborted child and that child lives with the umbilical cord still connected, they can lay that child on the sideboard until she decides to have it. If she says no, they cut the cord and wheel it off and it dies. Well, oh, pass that ain't real. Yeah, it is. Abortion's a real thing. Why? It's because God has been put on the back burner. If you think about what's going on today with cities lighting things up to represent something that is unscriptural because they say they can, we are on a downslide. But aren't you glad? That he who dwells in you can maintain a strength in you that you can turn your face from that stuff. Get on your knees and say, Lord, this has to stop. You know the only way it's going to stop? It's through the prayers of the righteous people sharing the gospel with those that don't know. Hey, I wrote something down here this morning. I'm going to read it to you. <clears throat> Because so many times the person that's walking in the presence of God has something to say to an individual. Sometimes it's said wrong. Sometimes it's said completely out of context. Remember, the person who loves you the most isn't the one who tells you what you want to hear. The one who really loves you will tell you what you need. So it's time for God's people to quit looking for that stroke ego. To quit looking for that pat on the back. And start walking more and more in his presence. How many of you, and you don't have to raise your hand, you don't have to even think about this, but how many of you wake up in the morning and your first responsibility or your first thought is to do something for you? You know what our first thought should be, Lord? Today's yours. What do you want to do? And then do the things that you're used to doing. But so many of us wake up and put God on a burner because it's all you. Matter of fact, you might be thinking about what you're doing the next day all night long. 
And what you're doing is you're allowing yourself to step out of his manifested presence in you. Don't get me wrong. You can't walk around and profess to be a Christian and have him show up. You have to be a bona fide, prayed up, read up, fed up believer of God and know the power of the Holy Spirit and walk in the blood bought place that you are to understand that he wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. And he wants to tell you his own. It's a song, isn't it? He wants to tell you you belong to him. How do you get there? How do you get into the presence of God? Always remember, you cannot escape the omnipotent presence of God, but He's everywhere. But you can't, but you can't try to hide from His manifested presence. Turn with me to Psalm 1611. Thou will make known to me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy right hand there are pleasures forever. In the presence of God, in the manifested presence of God, there is fullness of joy. He has promised you pleasures forever. Not worldly pleasures, but pleasures with him forever. That's his promise. Worship. Worship is the way we come into the presence of the Lord. Worship is the way that we come into the presence of the Lord. Worship is the way that we come into the presence of the Lord. Worship is the way that we come into the presence of the Lord. Not like this. Not like this. Not like this. But worship. When you're alone, when you're with people, when you're locked in a jail cell and you begin to worship and the chains fall off and the gates fly open and you walk out in freedom, that's how you come in the presence of God. He's standing there waiting for you to call upon Him, waiting for you to worship Him, waiting for you to give Him glory so He can say, well done! As you worship God and His manifestation presence moved in, the fullness of joy enters in. How many of you in this room, to be honest with yourself, how many in this room have ever put, when you come into a worship service, you put worship on the sideline? And what do I mean by that? This is what I mean by that. Is worship so important to you to give God glory that you look up toward heaven and you and you actually say, Lord, I'm here for you. I said, man, I got more than one today. I got, man, I got a cow. I got a milk. I got, you know, I, I got, I got that dog. Man, my, my dog just had litter. I, you know, that's what I mean. And it happens Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. There's always something that the devil tries to put over you so you don't enter into a time of worship. Let me tell you what freedom is. Freedom to worship God is to stand before Him unhindered, raising your hands up and shouting at the loud top of your voice. Nobody in here is going to reprimand you for speaking out worship. Nobody in this room is going to reprimand you or look bad at you for not worshiping God in all of His glory that He is in His manifested presence in you. What would you do someday if you're sitting on a curb somewhere and God says, worship me. Right now? Yeah, right now. Worship me. Give me the glory that I deserve. Right now, Lord? And I'm not saying he would ever do it. But what I'm saying is this. If he does it, are you prepared to do it? When you walk into a worship service, are you there to worship? Or are you there to see everybody else? You know, for me, if I came to a worship service and I was the only fool down there, the only one in the whole building, nobody else, just me, I would worship God with every fiber of my being. Why? Because that's what we're called to do. 
Cliff mentioned worshiping in his truck. I've heard other members of this body say, I worship thirst, I worship this, I worship this, I worship this. Sometimes when you're involved in a heavy part of your job, you worship God, but it's kind of like, Lord, I wish this would go. I wish this would go. Would you give me, make me go faster, right? But when you worship and the manifestation presence of God shows up at your job site, whether you're baking, cooking, or whatever, digging a ditch or whatever it is, there's just something about that time. There's just something about the opportunity you have to be in front of God and give Him everything that you have. It's all about giving everything up because He gave it up. That was that my favorite store the other day, which I don't go in. My wife goes in the dollar store. The <laughs> dollar store. <laughs> and I was sitting there and, and this young person, I don't know how old he was, but he was a young person. And he was walking in front of, down the sidewalk, and he had carts and boxes and all kinds of stuff. He was trying to get to his next place of, of sleeping. And I put my head down on my little pickup. I said, Lord, if there's any way I can bless this young man, would you let me do that? And wherever he's going, would you be at the other end to receive from you? And I got out of my pickup and I walked up to him and I looked at him and I said, Brother, I don't know your name. But I'll tell you one thing for sure. Jesus loved you. And he died for you. This is going to seem kind of weird to some of you, but I turned around, walked in my truck, and when I turned around, he was gone. What do you think that was? He was gone. And pulling all that stuff, he should have been 15 feet from where I was. He was gone. You know what the Lord was telling me? Sometimes when you're ministering, you're ministering to people that you have no idea are even there. Angels. Isn't that what the Bible says? Angels unaware? So when God prompts you to do something, do it. Because if you happen to be worshiping or you happen to be talking to an angel, guess how many attaboys you get now? Yeah. Right? Because what you're proving to God is, you know what, God doesn't matter what he looks like, what he smells like, what he's doing. I'm going to talk to him. Even if it's just Jesus loves you. So I encourage you today to keep the manifestation of his presence alive in your life by worshiping, by praying, by reading, by asking God, what is it you want for me to do today? And if, if deadlines are a dire enemy to you, which they are to my wife, put your deadlines in him. Amen? Open your heart. Open your heart to the manifestation and presence of God. True worship. Heartfelt worship. Holy Spirit-led worship will bring you into the light of his manifested presence. Amen? Amen? Father, thank you for this time we've had together, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises that are yes and amen in all that you ask us to do. Father, I know that sometimes when we hear stuff, it has a tendency to tingle. Sometimes it has a downright hurtful. But Father, we know you love us so much that you give us the truth. You love us too much to keep us and leave us where we are. You love us too much to keep us there. You want us to bring into us into a right relationship with you. And we cannot escape your manifestation presence. Because in that, we feel you, we see you, we hear you. So Father, help us to be worship-filled people. Help us to be glorifying God people. Help us to always worship the Son who died for us and the Father who gave us life and the Holy Spirit who brings us power. So this morning, Lord, I pray that you would go with us and you would talk to us and you would speak to us. And more than that, Lord, I pray that we become open to receive from you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Praise you, Lord.